our universal journey. A cat with an incurable kind of cancer. A job that is always tenuous. Human relationships that are fragile, unpredictable, and sometimes tumultuous. My own body seemingly healthy, but still subject to disease, fatigue, and aging. Life is unpredictable. However much we think we have a handle on it, the truth is we never really know what's to come. Everything can change in an instant. This is a tough truth to accept, for though we know intellectually that all things in life are impermanent, we often don't feel it instinctively. We persist in our attempts to control life. We imagine that we can predict and manipulate future events. We imagine that we control, or at least have a strong influence on, external events. But this is not really the case. In fact, all that worry, manipulation, and attempted control is mostly wasted energy. We are not the masters of the external world. We cannot predict the future. Our best laid plans are always subject to catastrophic failure. There is no security to be found in the outside world. There is no secure job or relationship or situation of any kind. Everything changes. We can conceivably lose them all in the blink of an eye. Where then is true security to be found? Certainly not in the external world, but rather internally. Trust yourself to react appropriately when catastrophe happens. Failure of nerve is really failure to trust yourself. Alan Watts. This is the only true security, the security of trusting yourself, the security of flexibility and adaptability, the security of spiritual and emotional self-reliance. Rather than obsess over external events, we better serve ourselves by obsessing over inner resources. Our security and happiness come from our inner peace, our ability to accept any situation, adapt to it, use it, learn from it, and, perhaps, overcome it. The more we do this, the more confident we grow, and, in time, we develop a true sense of security in our lives, one that is completely independent of external circumstances. Practically, this implies that our task is to seek out new experiences and build our capacity to adapt to them. This is the reason I think of travel as a potentially spiritual practice. Travel, especially long, challenging journeys, expands our ability to accept and adapt to the unexpected and the unknown. This kind of travel is a concentrated training exercise in impermanence and change. Joseph Campbell, the famed mythologist, identified the common thread running through the mythological journeys found in most cultures. He noted that while these stories are always presented as external journeys, they are, in fact, symbolic of, inner, of the inner journey we must all make. In the end, we must all leave home, the safe and the comfortable. We must all face life-changing challenges. We must all face loss, and we must all arrive at our own understanding of impermanence, and our own wisdom. This is the universal journey. Welcome to the vocabulary for our universal journey. Let's get started. Uh, near the beginning, you hear the word tenuous. Actually, there's a, uh, a couple sentences here that have several words. I say, a job that is always tenuous. Human relationships that are fragile, unpredictable, and sometimes tumultuous. All right, tenuous, first of all, means um, it's something that's uncertain, something that could easily change, that you could lose it very easily. So if I say my job is very tenuous, it means, oh, I don't have much security. I could easily lose my job. I could lose it very quickly. Tumultuous has the idea of, of being very uh, full of conflict, full of emotion, changing all the time. Uh, sometimes we might describe the ocean as a tumultuous sea, a tumultuous ocean. It means there are big waves, there's a storm. If we describe a relationship as tumultuous, it means that there, the people are always fighting and arguing and it's always changing, so it's tumultuous. All right, uh, you'll see the word fatigue in the next sentence. I say that my body is subject to disease, fatigue, and aging. Fatigue means um, 
basically tiredness. It means being tired uh, over a long period of time. So it's not just, you know, you, you do some hard work and then you're tired. It's, it's actually over several days or maybe months or even years. If you're always tired, we say you have fatigue. Or the adjective you'd say, we, you are fatigued with an, with an ed on the end there. All right, uh, next phrase, uh, have a handle on it. I, in the sentence I say, however much we think we have a handle on it, the truth is we really know, never know what's to come in life. Okay, so if we think we have a handle on it, to have a handle on something means to be in control of it, to have control over that. So if you have a handle on life, it means you have control over your life. You basically are successful at it. If you don't have a handle on something, it means you don't understand it, or you can't control it, or you're not successful. Something like that. All right. Uh, in this, you see a couple times in this article the word impermanent. And impermanent is the opposite of permanent. Permanent means something never changes. It's always true. It's always there. Uh, if you talk about a permanent relationship, it means you're always together. Impermanent means quite the opposite. It means something changes all the time. It's never the same. Uh, so life, this is kind of a, you know, this is a, definitely a Buddhist idea. Impermanent. Life is impermanent. It means things always change. Nothing stays the same. All right. The next sentence, I, I use the verb persist. We persist in our attempts to control life. To persist is to keep trying. It means to continue to try to do something. It means you do not quit. You do not give up. Usually it's a pretty positive word, actually. It's a verb, so to persist. So we persist in our attempts to control life. It means we keep trying to control life. We keep trying again and again. We never stop trying to control life. And in that uh, same part of that sentence, I, you'll see the uh, verb manipulate. I say we imagine that we can predict and manipulate future events. To manipulate, uh, it's a little more of a negative word usually. Manipulate means to try to control or affect or influence something. You can manipulate a person, for example. You try to get them to do what you want them to do. <coughs> In that kind of situation, manipulate usually has a little bit of a negative meaning. It means maybe you're lying or you're doing something that's not totally good or honest to change somebody, to make them do something. So when we say, oh, he manipulated me, it usually has a negative idea that he, he lied to you so you would do something. Okay. But in this case, it's more of a neutral because we're not talking about a person. We're talking about manipulating events in the future and manipulating our own lives. Then it has a neutral idea. But if you use it to, own it, to manipulate another person, control another person, it's negative. All right, catastrophic occurs in the next paragraph. I say, our best laid plans, means just that just means our best plans, um, are always subject to, can always have, catastrophic failure. Uh, and then later on in the same uh, article, a couple of paragraphs later, you see, you see the noun, catastrophe. It's the Alan Watts quotes. He says, to trust yourself to react appropriately when catastrophe happens. The noun catastrophe means a total, huge, big failure. Catastrophe means a disaster, right? Everything goes wrong. Everything fails. Everything falls apart. Everything is destroyed. That's a catastrophe. So the adjective is catastrophic. Catastrophic failure means a total failure, a disastrous failure. It means everything fails and falls apart and is horrible. So I'm saying that our, even if we have great plans, they can always have a catastrophic failure, totally fail. All right. In that same Alan Watts quote, he uses the phrase failure of nerve. Failure of nerve is really failure to trust yourself. Nerve has a few meanings, but in this case, nerve means courage. It means uh, lack of fear, no fear. So failure of nerve means you're afraid. If you have a failure of nerve, it means you're afraid and you don't do something you should do. So he's saying that um, if you're afraid, if you're afraid to do what you need to do, the real problem is you don't trust yourself. 
that fear comes from not trusting yourself. And if you want to be strong and courageous and have a good life, you need to trust yourself and not worry about the outside world and outside problems. If you trust yourself, you can handle anything. Okay. We uh, see the, the verb obsess in this article a few times. To obsess. Obsess is usually used with either over or uh, about. You obsess over something or you obsess about something. And to obsess means to think about something again and again and again and again. In fact, you only think about this topic or this subject. So if you obsess over external events, it means you're always thinking about what's happening in the outside world, and that's all you think about. You never think about inside yourself. So to obsess over means to think about something. It often has the idea of too much. You just keep thinking about this same thing again, 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 and you know, probably too much. All right, you'll see the, in the next page, the second page of the learning guide, at the top, the verb overcome. That maybe you can overcome your problems. To overcome means to solve a problem or to beat a opponent or someone who's trying, an enemy. If you beat them, if you win against them, you overcome them. If you have a big, big problem and you finally solve it, then you overcome the problem. It means you go past it. It no longer is bothering you. All right. In the uh, next paragraph, we see the verb imply, to imply. Uh, in the sentence, it says, practically, this implies that our task is to seek out new experiences. Okay, to imply means to suggest. So this suggests, this, this information suggests to us, it tells us indirectly, not directly, but indirectly, not directly. It suggests that we should seek out new experiences. A task, by the way, our task means our job. A task is a job or a project, something you have to do. And to seek out means to find or look for. All right, in that same sentence, we see the word capacity. So we have to seek out new experiences and we have to build our capacity to adapt to them. Our capacity means our potential, our ab possible ability to do something. Okay, so it has this idea of possibility, what you can do. Uh, your potential, your ab possible ability, what you can possibly do, that's capacity. So if you build your capacity to adapt, adapt means change with a situation, right? If the situation changes, then you can change to survive. So if you build your capacity to adapt, it means you have more potential, more ability to adapt. When things change, it's easier for you to change also. That's building your capacity. All right, and then in the next paragraph, we see the phrase, the common thread. This is a very common little idiom in English. I say, Joseph Campbell identified the common thread running through the mytholog mythological journeys found in most cultures. Okay, myth. Myths, myths are stories, uh, usually kind of religious stories, spiritual stories. Um, so they usually have some deeper meaning. So mythological journeys means spiritual trips, spiritual travels. And there are a lot of stories in all parts of the world, all religions, about these big heroic stories, stories of heroes going on trips, going on a big travel, fighting against monsters and coming home. Those are mythological journeys. And he said the common thread running through them, that's a common phrase, common thread running through them. It means the common idea. It means even though they all, all these stories are different, they have a common idea, a similar idea. So we use that phrase a lot, the common thread running through something. It means the common idea, the similar idea. All right, and then uh, we see the, the, in the last paragraph, we see the, the word face, but we're using it as a verb, so it's not the face on your head. It says, sometimes we must all face life-changing challenges. We must all face loss. So to face something means to meet it, to encounter it, to deal with it. Um, so if you say, I must face this problem at work, it means you can't run away from it. You have to deal with it. You have to handle it. You have to solve it somehow. 
You have to meet it. You can't escape it. That's what to face means, using it as a verb. All right, and finally, in the last sentence, we see the word universal. This is also in the title. This is the universal journey. Universal is an adjective. It means something that is true always, all the time, for everyone, in every place. So it has this idea of something that is true always. It's not just true for Americans, or it's not just true right now, and it's not just true uh, sometimes. It means it's always true. It's true everywhere. It's true for every single person. So that's universal. So this is the universal journey means this is the universal trip, the universal travel. It means this is a trip that everyone must take. Everyone in their life at some time must face these problems. Everyone will experience loss. Everyone will have to face impermanence, change. Everyone will have to face their own death eventually. These are universals. Everyone must face them. Okay, that is it for today's vocabulary. Okay, welcome to the crazy story section of the Our Universal Journey article. Okay, let's get started. Once there was a frog. He wanted to find a princess, so he went on a journey. He walked for many years. Every day he imagined his princess. In fact, he obsessed about her. He couldn't think of anything else. But he could not find her. He kept walking all over the world. He became fatigued, very, very tired. He wanted to quit, but he said to himself, I will not have a failure of nerve. I will overcome every problem. I will overcome every catastrophe. I will persist until I find her. One day, the frog came to a large, tumultuous river with huge rocks and big waves. He was so fatigued, he didn't have the capacity to swim across. Then he saw a turtle. He yelled to it, Can you help me cross the river? The turtle said, Why do you want to cross? The frog said, I must find my princess. The turtle was surprised. He said, are you implying that you want to marry a human? Yes, said the frog. The frog got onto the turtle's back. He was a small turtle and his back was very wet. The frog's position was very tenuous. He almost fell several times, but finally they made it to the other side. There on the other side, he saw a beautiful woman. It was his princess. He jumped into her arms and kissed her. She turned into a frog, and they got married and lived happily ever after. Okay, let's go again up from the top. This time I'm going to ask some questions. The reason I ask questions is to repeat the new vocabulary and help you remember and understand it better. Here we go. Once there was a frog. He wanted to find a princess, so he went on a journey. He took a trip, a journey, a long trip. He walked for many years. Every day he imagined his princess. He obsessed over her. Did he obsess about food? No, of course, he didn't obsess about food. He didn't care about food. Did he obsess about the weather? Was he always thinking about the weather? No. What did he obsess about? Well, he obsessed about his princess. He imagined her, what she looked like. He could not think about anything else. He only thought about his princess. He obsessed about her completely, totally. Every day he obsessed about his princess. He couldn't think about anything else, but he couldn't find her. He kept walking all over the world. He became fatigued. Did he get more energy as he walked? No. He got more tired. He became fatigued. Did he feel just a little bit tired? No, he was fatigued. He was very, very tired. Did he feel tired just for one day or just for a small, short period of time? 
No, he was fatigued. He felt tired all the time, every day. And every day, he became more and more fatigued, more and more tired. He wanted to quit. He wanted to give up. Did he have a failure of nerve? Did he lose his courage? No, he did not have a failure of nerve. In fact, he said to himself, I will not have a failure of nerve. I will not become afraid. I will not become weak. I will not have a failure of nerve. He said, I will overcome every problem. So he wanted to solve every problem. He wanted to beat every challenge. He wanted to beat every opponent. He wanted to win against every single problem that came in his way. He also said, I will overcome every catastrophe. So not just small problems. Was he ready to face big, big problems? Yes, he was. Was he ready to face huge failures? Yes, he was. He was ready to face every catastrophe. He was ready for catastrophe. He was not afraid. His nerve did not fail. Did he keep trying? Yes, he did. He said, I will persist until I find her. Did he say he would give up after a little while? No. Did he plan to ever give up? No. He said he would persist until he found her. He would never get up. He would keep trying again and again and again and again. Never give up. He said, I will persist. Okay, one day the frog, frog came to a large tumultuous river. Was it a calm river? No, it was not a calm river. Uh, did it have just small little waves? No, it had huge, really big waves. It was a tumultuous river. Did the river stay the same? No, the river did not stay the same. It was always changing. Huge, big waves crashing. All these large currents, everything moving and changing. It was a very tumultuous river. This tumultuous river was impossible to cross because... He was so fatigued. He was too tired to cross this tumultuous river. Could he cross a calm river? Yeah, probably he could cross a calm river. He, was, he could still swim, but he could not cross this big tumultuous river. Did he have the capacity to swim across? No, he, he did not have the abilities to swim across. Why did he not have the capacity to swim across? Well, because he'd been walking every day so he was too tired. He lost his capacity. He lost his ability. He lost his strength to swim across a big tumultuous river. So he did not have the capacity to swim across this river. What did he do? Well, he saw a turtle and he called to the turtle. He said, can you help me cross the river? So the turtle did have the capacity to cross the river. The turtle said, why do you want to cross? And the frog said, I must find my princess. The turtle was surprised because the frog was a frog and the princess was human. So he said, are you implying that you want to marry a human? And the frog said, yes. Did the frog directly say he wanted to marry a human? No, he did not directly say it. He just said, I want to find a princess. And the turtle thought, ah, must be a human. But the frog did not directly say it. He implied it, right? He indirectly said he wanted to marry a human. He directly said, I want to find my princess, but that implies that the princess is probably human. So it implies, it suggests that hmm, he probably wants to marry a human. And this surprised the turtle. Okay, the frog got on the turtle's back, but the turtle was very small and his back was very wet, easy to fall off. So did the frog have a strong position on the turtle's back? No. Was the frog's position very secure, very safe? No. What kind of position was it? Well, <coughs> excuse me, it was a tenuous position. It means it could change very easily. He could fall off very easily. It was wet, it was small, a very tenuous position. The frog had a tenuous position, but did he fall? No, he did not fall. His position was tenuous, but he was okay. He did not fall off. Finally, he got to the other side. And he got to the other side. He saw a beautiful woman. It was his princess. He jumped up and he kissed the princess. And the princess became a frog. 
they kissed again and they got married and they were always happy together. All right, one more time, this time with fewer questions. Once there was a frog, he wanted to find a princess. So he went on a journey, a very long, difficult trip. He walked for many years. Every day he imagined his princess. He obsessed about her. He thought about her all the time. He only thought about her. He obsessed about her. But he couldn't find her. He kept walking all over the world, year after year after year. So he became very tired. He became fatigued. Even though he was fatigued, he did not have a failure of nerve. He did not become afraid. He said, I will not have a failure of nerve. I will overcome every problem. I will beat every problem. I will overcome every catastrophe. I will overcome every disaster. I will persist. I will keep trying until I find her. I will never quit. I will persist. One day the frog came to a large tumultuous river. It was not a calm river. It was not a small river. It was a tumultuous river, churning and moving very fast. It had huge rocks and waves. It was a tumultuous river. And he felt so much fatigue. He didn't have the capacity to cross the river. He was not strong enough anymore. He didn't have the capacity to swim across. So he yelled to a turtle, Can you help me cross the river? The turtle said, Why do you want to cross? And the frog said, I must find my princess. He was still obsessed. The turtle was surprised. Are you implying that you want to marry a human? Are you suggesting you want to marry a human? Yes, the frog said, still obsessed. The frog got on the turtle's back, but he was a small turtle and his back was wet. The frog's position was not good. It was a tenuous position. He could easily fall off. He almost fell several times, but finally they got to the other side. On the other side, he saw a beautiful woman. It was his princess. He jumped into her arms and kissed her. Mwah! She became a frog and a frog princess for him. They kissed again. They got married. The end. Okay, listen to this a couple times. It will help you remember some of these key vocabulary words, these important vocabulary words. And uh, as usual, review the text, review the learning guide, listen a few times to everything. 